Hey y'all and welcome back. So it is a beautiful day here in Eastern North Carolina and I can tell you I have had a heavy heart this past couple of days of all of our friends that are over in Western North Carolina and our friends in Georgia. So I've actually struggled with making this video because I was like, you know, with everything that's going on, you know, how can we like worry about plants and gardenings in times like these? But I also thought about too, we've actually moved a lot in our marriage between Hardy when he was pastoring and now that he's a chaplain in the military. And one of the things that they always taught us was to have a place when you first move that you could have like this sense of peace. So like finish one room, get one room at least unpacked. So amongst all the chaos and everything that's going on that you at least have one spot that you can go to and have a little bit of peace. So I'm hoping that this video today, we're gonna be making some fall containers, will bring you a little bit of peace amongst all the chaos. And I hope that you can uh, find a little enjoyment and a little relaxation in it. So I hope you enjoy today's video. So the girls and I yesterday made a little quick trip to Wilmington and on the way back home, we decided to stop at Pender Pine. So I wanted to share a little bit of that with you today. Look how beautiful these snapdragons are. And their cabbage and mims. Okay, so here's the pansies. So we need to get enough pansies to go in our pots and some to go into the landscape. They have some really pretty colors too. So what are you guys thinking? I think it's pretty to go with autumn colors because we don't typically mm -hmm. do them. So, so like yellows, of, oranges, yeah. reds. I think most of the time my eyes are attracted to like the blues and purples. Mm -hmm. Um and I don't really go for yellow, but I don't know. I think the oranges would be kind of pretty. Or do that in the mums, you know. Mm -hmm. They've got some really pretty ones, and they've got the little violas as well. The violas have such dainty little petals. Oh, look how pretty this one is. Oh, this little face. It uh -huh. always reminds me of Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, it does me too. Okay, so you just not kind of need to create like a color palette for yourself. So you're thinking yellows, oranges. Yeah. Okay, one though, look how cool this one is. I think it was like part of the purple because you see it a little bit there, but it's almost like black. That's so with the pretty orange. with the orange. It's like they needed a whole bunch of those to be Halloween themed. They do. Um, and we can just do like a flat and do like any color that you want to do. Okay. Should I think maybe about the pots first? Like separate yeah. it in my head. So we've got um, these our, are cute. our big pots where our ferns are at. Yeah, these are pretty. And then we've got some singular black pots. And then we've got our blue pots. So one, two, we probably have like about four pots to do. Okay. I definitely think these are pretty. Yeah, and they kind of have the double layer of petals on them. Yeah, those are pretty. And then they've got some orange over here, and they've got some yellow. Those are all pretty. So what we'll do is we'll go through these, and we'll pick out the colors we want, and then we'll show you guys in the end what we what we figured out. Okay, so the, this looks like a pretty good little haul, guys. Just the beginning. <laughs> These are some of the beautiful plants that we got yesterday. So we have this beautiful, it's almost like this clear orange color pansy. And these pansies are so purple that they look black. So they were very pretty. Then one of our ones that's very striking is this one here with the purple and the yellow. And it kind of has that little ruffly look to the edges. And then this one is like the same but it's got more of the yellow and less of the burgundy. So it was just super pretty. And we thought it went really well with this white with the yellow. So this is going to be our pansies that we're going to use this year in our containers. Then we picked up some of the ornamental kale. So we have two of them that have like the rosy color in the center. 
and then we have one that's just like the white with a variegation. And then yesterday afternoon, after our trip, I went by Lowe's and I picked up these Autumn Joy Sedums, which are so pretty. So we'll be able to plant these out in the landscape once we're finished with our little fall containers. And then I also picked up these little mums. And I thought the colors were just perfect for the colors that we had already picked out. So we've got this pink color, and then we've got this orange color, and then we've got this yellow color. And so here it is on the tag. So I thought these would go really good with all the colors that we have picked out so far. So we've got these little window boxes that we're going to be working on today. Uh, this one is completely out of soil because it was so root bound. This one over here still has some soil, so we're just going to recharge that with some biotone. We've got this blue pot over here. And I've actually been keeping these watered so they don't get dried out. So we're going to put a little arrangement in this one as well. Okay, so I have this pot is all ready with some fresh potting soil. Then I'm just going to add some of the biotone in here. And then just kind of mix that in together. And then I'm going to start off by putting one of the kale in the center. And this one is a Nagoya Rose kale here. Pretty root bound, so we'll get that kind of cleaned up. They had some of the kale there that was huge. But I didn't want to get something with such a big root ball because they were going in these little window boxes. I always kind of like to set them over like this because you're going to be able to see them from the road. And so let me uh, show you what it looks like when I have it in here. Okay, so I've taken the root ball and kind of tipped it towards the front. And so this is what it looks like. I want to dig this out a little bit more and then make sure that this is covered up with soil so it won't dry out from the backside. But when you see it from the road, it will look like this. So I think that's going to look really pretty. Okay, so let me dig this out a little bit more. And then we'll mound the dirt up around that root ball. And then we can kind of take some soil from the sides. And there we go. Now it's completely covered. Now we're going to add some of the pansies in. So we have some of these beautiful chrysanthemums. I think I'm going to use, I've got three of the pinks, three of the orange, and three of the yellows. So I think I'm going to kind of mix all, these all up into the containers. Okay, so the first one is done. So I chose one of the burgundy pansies to go here. And then we have the orange mum. And then the yellow one. And then we have the purple. And then we also have the purple over here. And I think that looks really good with the purple that's going to be here in the center. So I'm going to do the other one the exact same way. So I'm just going to rough this one up a little bit with this soil, and then I'm going to add some biotone to make sure there's no old roots down in here. But I didn't really see a need to replace this soil since this will just be for our fall containers. But definitely if you have any issue with like pests like aphids or anything like that, or um, and I do have a couple of pots that have a head aphids, so I'm going to throw those away. But you can just kind of recharge it with some of the biotone. And then these will get a weekly water soluble fertilizer. So they should be good to go. We're going to start off with the 
purple kale first. We do the same thing like we did before. We're going to dig a little hole for it here and then we'll place it on its side and then build it back up. And usually as the season goes along, I take off the little leaves that start to get yellowed. Like this one's already yellowed, so I'll probably go ahead and take that one off. And then it just kind of cleans it up. It'll look a little wopsided for a while, but you'll be okay. So one of the first um, remembrances that I have of growing flowers is one of our neighbors when I was growing up, she had this huge bed of chrysanthemums around one of her trees. And she took some clippings off of it and she gave some to me. And I took those clippings and propagated them. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know it was called propagation. But in a sense, that's what I was doing. I would take the little clippings and I ended up with this huge bed of chrysanthemums. And I would keep them trimmed like a hedge with hedge trimmers. And that was my chrysanthemum bed. And I loved it. I just thought it was so pretty. It was these light purple chrysanthemums. And um, they would come back every year. They would always want to start flowering. And so that's when I would start cutting them back. So then I would have a beautiful show in the fall of those beautiful chrysanthemums. So it's really neat when you can get clippings from your friends or family and you can get started growing plants very inexpensively. And these chrysanthemums here, um, I will just take them, ah, a butterfly. <laughs> I'll just take them out once these containers are done and we will add them to the landscape. So I did have two out of our three chrysanthemums from last year were able to overwinter and they're blooming right now. They're beautiful. Let me show you guys close up what it looks like. So we have our little pansy here. This one doesn't have any blooms on them. And then our kale, that's going to be really pretty. Another pansy. And then we have our little chrysanthemums in the back. And then we're going to put that on the other side of the porch. Okay, so this is number three. Just going to go through here and make sure there's not any clumps of roots. We'll give it a good charge with some biotone. And then we'll put a little new soil in it. Are y'all as messy as I am <laughs> planting stuff? Okay, so here is our other cabbage here, our kale, and this is the Nagoya white. So the other one was the Nagoya rose, so this one just has the white in the center. I think that's really pretty. This one's going to go on the side of the porch, so it doesn't have to exactly match the other ones. This one's not this one's not as big it's a little shorter a little harder to reach okay so we're going to put our little chrysanthemums in the back these are going to be so cute Oh, that one's got a big root. One of the other things I used to love to propagate when I was growing up was hostas. And I had this bed beside our house that was pretty much in full shade. I don't know what side of the house it was on because 
when I was little, I didn't think about the sun position. I just knew it didn't get any sun over there. Oh no, the top of this one broke off. That's so sad. But you can take this and try to read it. <laughs> take off the little buds. There you go. We'll just stick it in there and see what happens. But anyway, so that hosta bed, um, we started off with just a couple of pastas. And then we would go through and we would propagate them each year. And after a while, it just got so full of hostas and impatience. It was so pretty. I do miss that flower bed. And it had these bricks. So my dad had this guy um, that was selling bricks. And I think his name was Bootsy. And we would go over to his house and we would go and get bricks from him. And I remember that was the hardest job I'd ever done. And my hands were literally raw when we would get finished. I guess I was working without gloves on. But we made these beautiful brick sidewalks. And one of them was beside that shade flower bed. And then the other one went in between my chrysanthemum bed. So I was definitely <laughs> a gardener even when I was young. Always love flowers. And we've lived lots of different places, but I've always made sure that every year, even if I could only plant in containers, that I always had fall and summer containers. Um, we had some really pretty containers in New Jersey. So New Jersey... I didn't like living there because it was so cold, but it was definitely called the Garden State for a reason because their nurseries were kind of like when we went to Michigan. The nurseries were beautiful there in New Jersey. I do miss the apple picking this time of year, um, and I miss their nurseries because they had lots of beautiful plants. Okay, number three is done. Okay, on this one, we used the Nagoya white, and then we used the pansy with the yellow and the burgundy, and then we used this here as well, and then we have our little chrysanthemums over here in the back, and this was the one that broke off a little bit, so I kind of stuffed it down in there. We'll see if it reads. It might. Now, one thing I have noticed is this area over here. It's really prone to aphids. So I'm probably going to go ahead and spray these pansies right after I get them um, put over here. Do y'all make big messes like this? <laughs> I hope I'm not the only one. Thank goodness for the electric um, blowers. Okay, so I think what we're going to do now is work on this pot right here. And I'll bring it over to the table and we'll get started with it. Ooh, this one's a chunk. A heavy pot. So when we bought our house in Chesapeake, Virginia, uh, the people we bought it from, they left these three blue pots. And they're in different sizes. But they have done so well. They, they lived in Virginia. Then they moved to New Jersey. And now they're here in North Carolina. And um. I love the color of them because, you know, blue and white is always right. I think an ant just came up and bit my foot. So we'll get these charged up a little bit with some of the biotone. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to start off by using the Autumn Joy Sedum. Ooh, as our centerpiece. That is a big old root ball. Might take a little bit of this off. It's not really heavily rooted. Just a lot of dirt. Mm. 
normally if I was planting in the ground, I would leave all that. But with this pot, I don't want to over overfill it. Kind of make a little well in the center here for this. And then I think what we may do is add some of the orange and the black. Or, let's see. That would be pretty too. We'll think about that for a minute. So this is the one that's the Colossal Rose Melody. That's the one that had more of the yellow in it. I'm going to add a couple of those. And then add a couple of these of the um, called Matrix Primrose. It's like a soft yellow white. Okay, I think that's going to look good. That's one of the neat things about the fall containers is that, you know, you don't, you don't have to live with them that long if you really don't like them. <laughs> but I think this is going to be really pretty. It's going to be very soft. Pansies are susceptible to aphids so you do have to watch that if you're in an area that tends to get aphids because they will get on your pansies and then these autumn joy sedums we can just pop these out in the landscape when we're done with them which will be really nice so i'm on a group on facebook Called the garden ants or groupies and they were talking about autumn joy sedum the other day and how somebody she really didn't like the way they looked and I shared a picture of our autumn joy sedums with the lamb's ear and um, everybody loved that picture I think I've gotten like over a hundred likes because it's so pretty with that pink from the Autumn Joy Sedum and that pretty dusty soft color from the Lamb's Ear. Like a beautiful combination. Okay, so this one is done. Okay, so let me get you guys a little closer so you can see what it looks like. But these are the pansies that I chose here with that buttery white color. I think that looks so pretty with the Autumn Joy Sedum. I think this one might be broke. Ah, might as well just pinch it off now. I can take this inside the house. And then we chose the other one with the burgundy with the yellow. I think that's gonna be really pretty. We kind of just did a little grouping, like a little ring around. Just nice and simple. So this one I want to do kind of the Halloween-y colors. This is going to be on the front porch um, with our pumpkins, which we haven't gotten our pumpkins yet, but we'll need to get some pumpkins. So I'm going to use some of the oranges to go in here. It's hard because not all of them are blooming, so you forget which one is which. And then some of the black. This one's called um, Penny Black. 
dark blue, almost black flowers. And that is gorgeous. So we'll have three of the yellow orange and we'll have three of the black. It's going to be pretty. The nice thing for us with pansies is because we um, live in eastern North Carolina, zone eight, and it doesn't get as cold as a lot of places do. And so pansies. Like when we were in New Jersey, people used pansies in the spring, but here we can use them into the fall and then into the spring as well. And then when things start warming up, then we can just pop them out and put in our summer annuals. Y'all, these little, these little root balls, they don't take any time to plant. They're so quick. And then they'll all fill in in the center. They probably did need a, a thriller on the top, but that's okay. We'll have lots of pumpkins to fill in that will give us a, a thriller effect. Okay, so that one is done. So here's the orange. Here's the black. So pretty. And, you know, I was just thinking we could put, like, a little pumpkin in the center. That would be really cute. Okay, so this is going to be another one of our Halloween themed ones that will go on the front steps. These are going to be so cute. And I think the pumpkin idea will be so adorable. So we usually like to go and get our pumpkins from Lidl. Um, they usually get in local pumpkins, so... We'll see how they they do because a lot of these pumpkins are grown in the western part of the state and they're just not doing good right now. So I heard somebody say, you know, they love going to the western part of the state of North Carolina to the mountains. And this year, a lot of the places we're not going to be able to go and enjoy. So make sure that you're what you would spend enjoying the mountains. Maybe you can give to your favorite local charity. Whoop, almost put them in the wrong order. <laughs> That's okay. They still would have been pretty. Okay. So this is how they're all lining up in here. We'll just kind of dig down in here and Get them all planted. So I was going to put the last autumn joy sedum in this pot, but I just don't have the heart to pull up my apple blossom geraniums yet. They're just so pretty. So I just need to figure out what to do with that other autumn joy sedum in the meantime these uh ferns are doing so good these are the foxtail ferns so pretty and these pots here these are the ones we're having problems with the aphids so i'm going to throw all of this away and clean these pots out really good and i've ran out of potting soil so i think i'm going to just have to hold this one in until i can get that all figured out So I'm going to get rid of these plants and make sure that I clean everything really good before we put anything back in this spot.
here is the first one that we did. Look how pretty that is. And let me step back and show you how it looks as you're, as you're coming from the, the yard here. Isn't that adorable? So pretty. And then the one on the other side, we did that one to match. We have the Nagoya rose kale in the middle. And then we have the pansies and then the chrysanthemums on the back. So pretty. And then let me show you the other side. As we go over here, this is our other one. I think I might have blew some of the dirt up with the blower. Here we go. Isn't that pretty? So pretty. And then let's go look at the ones on the porch. Here is the one with the Halloween colors in it with the orange and the black. And then we're going to get our pumpkins and we're going to get some more chrysanthemums. And we're just going to have these stairs all decked out for fall. It's going to be so pretty. Look at this one. And it's just adorable. So we still have our little plant nursery over there. <laughs> Okay, and so then we have our little container here with our Autumn Joy Sedum and our little mix of pansies. It's going to be so pretty. And then we have one here as well. How pretty that is. And then the little containers look so pretty even just from the, the porch here. We'll be able to see these chrysanthemums really good. Okay, so that's all for our projects today. I hope that it brought you a little inspiration if you're planning on doing some fall containers. And I hope it brought you a little relaxation and peace. And just know that if you were affected by these hurricanes or if you're delivering aid, our thoughts and prayers are with you. Hope you have a great day and I hope you have a chance to get in your garden today. Bye, friends.